Welcome to Cohesive Friendship Unit. My name is Chris. We're going to be talking about the Intellivision Amico console. Also, I am here with Jake and Brian. Hello. Yeah, you fucking forgot about us. Yeah, buddy. I'm what's, sorry. I'm what's sorry. What's going on there? That's a strike right there. You were uh, too excited about two the more Amico. videos. And two more, and Brian's going to be the host. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about the Intellivision Amico. Real quick, uh, if you like the video, please, please throw us a like. If you love us, sub us and let us know down in the comments. Uh, if you're planning on picking one of these up, if you're if you're at least intrigued. So here we go. Intellivision Amico, it's a console that aims to bring family gaming back. It's coming in at under $180, with the $180 being the most expensive one. And it's looking for an inexpensive violence-free 2D experience, uh, experience with games all being exclusive and all being under $10. Here we go. Let's plow. I think for what it is, it's it's really good. Because, like, the, the original in television came out in, what, 79? Something like? Yeah, 79. It You're was right. 79. I looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But like, so it's it was from an era when you're not like the violence was not what we have in video games now. Like, I mean, you video, even ga video it. games were not what we have yeah. in video games now. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that those they're they're simpler games because it's two D. You know, you're not dealing with you're dealing with a simpler system and you're not dealing with as many things it's easier for someone to pick up at like a party um and you said that you could use your you could download an app and use your phone as a controller right yeah you can yeah. use your phone as a controller so i think for like a party console type thing this is is perfect you know you got you got eight people over ten people over whatever they have a couple of games that are designed for a bunch of people they download the app on their phone and you play some video games you know it, i think it has the potential to be a lot of fun and for the price i mean you're, you're not you're really kind of getting in my mind a lot for the price mm -hmm. yeah i mean it looks I, I agree it's got some good features like the the phone as a controller i mean i think it's I understand why they went with the classic controller setup, um, even though it looks like an awful thing to use, but it makes sense. But in general, I'm kind of down on the classic consoles, but I can save my negativity for later. I don't <laughs> yeah, want to drag down the whole negative. video. Well, so, so I was... Go ahead. The, the idea with the with the controller, the original ones, is that you would get a an overlay that you could put over those buttons that had different um, like little symbols and stuff on it that corresponded to the game that you were playing. So I would imagine what they have on those controllers there that kind of look like iPods, it's probably like a touch screen that's going to have icons that correspond to the game that you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. Will be my, Yeah. So I'm just a little worried about the all exclusive thing. I basically I want to see this have a a, thir a thirty title launch. I want to see at least thirty games launching, only because I look at my NES Classic that I got for sixty bucks that has thirty games that are all two D, and I look at this it's one hundred and fifty bucks plus you have to buy games for between three and eight dollars. And I think if this doesn't sell enough units to sustain itself, I need to at least have something uh, to play on, on day one. Um, I just don't want this to crash and burn, I guess. And if it does crash and burn, I, I, I hope that there's a, a big enough cushion that you get your 150 bucks out of it. I think this isn't the same boat as the Atari remake. I mean, they're, they don't know where they want to be because it's not like they're Nintendo where there's enough of a following and like enough nostalgia to drive people buying like an under one hundred dollar classic console, so they're like, oh, we'll add in new games, but no one really wants to get like an old redone console for new games, but also old games. Like it's, I don't see the market for it, and I don't think there's enough people that grew up playing the Intellivision that are gonna buy this. Well. 
I wouldn't say that it's in the same area as the Atari at all, because <clears throat> this doesn't, like, it, there aren't people that, I mean, maybe there are, but these things weren't as common as, like, a, an Atari 2600, so there's a smaller proportion of people who remember having one of these when they were a kid. That cuts out your nostalgia market, but it also cuts out a lot of your expectations of what the system is supposed to be. True. So you can make it, you can take the licensing, you know, the games and stuff like that, the simple, you know, it's a, it's a basic game, it's 2D, it's probably going to have real blocky graphics and stuff like that. You can, you can take that and make it kind of whatever you want. You can make it, you know, Tecmo football or whatever, and but you can control every single player on the field, and everybody can have you know their own controller, and and you can play football with you know the little eight big characters or whatever. But everybody is actually involved in the game, which is I think probably closer to what they were imagining you know we're gonna make it like you're actually playing football back in 1979 you know the, it, it's closer to what they would have dreamed of I guess when they were coming up with this stuff um, so it, it's interesting in the in the nostalgia sense because it, it isn't really a console that's in the public memory without I mean unless you're going into like video game people yeah a whole lot of people aren't going to remember this. If you show someone an NES, you show someone an Atari 2600, they're going to know what that is. Like, it's a video yeah. game. You know, you just gave me, you gave me a thought as you were talking. Uh, looking at this now, this could be a good first console for a kid. Not even like, like a toddler. I'm talking like, you know, five, six, seven, eight year old. Because it's cheap. It's 150 bucks. Because I was thinking, oh, you know, Nintendo does family friendly games, but the Switch starts at 300 bucks. It was 150 bucks. Uh, all the games are between three and eight dollars, so it's not like you're spending 60 bucks a pop. Or even if you got a 2DS, those are like 40 dollars new. So it's not like you're spending uh, 40 to 60 dollars a pop on games. And uh, it, it's they're saying that there's going to be no post-purchase downloadable content, no in-app purchases. So from that perspective, it's actually pretty fine. Like kids who burn out on games fast, like you can buy them like. In, instead of one sixty dollar game, you could buy them twenty three dollar games on this, uh, and you know they'll they'll have a a great time, and it's it's half the price of a Switch. I don't right, know. It's a, I don't see it. I it's a basic video game. Though. Yeah, it's, like, a, it's, it's exactly yeah. right. It's, yeah, it's what it says on the box. Why get this when you could get an NES Classic? Like, well, so that was my original thought. That was that was why I said I want to say it, I wanted to at least have. A strong lineup but i would say with the nes and the snes video, these those games aren't going to be as fun for kids those are hard those are no, they're nostalgic games. They, yeah they're, they're nostalgic games yeah but and, you're playing this with an ipod like i don't any game that's on here is going to be in the same level of difficulty partially because you're playing with an ipod like i mean I don't know. They're I, all nostalgia machines. Like they're all being sold to people that remember the good old days. And when you have I mean, something put, that no one remembers I don't, playing I don't without know. games, they put the name in television on it for a reason. Right, but like who? I don't know any of the games from a television. Well, it. I, they actually did some pretty impressive things in television. They had. Uh, they had a lot of firsts in in the industry. Yeah, but I don't think they have the recognition that. Like a Nintendo would have, and it's right, not going to drive people to buy this. Jake, look they at, invented the pause feature. Look at the two things next to each other: the original one and the new one. There is, other than the design of the controllers, there is no common design language between those two. Right. Not the NES Classic and the SNES Classic knew what they had to be before they were conceived. It's. It's a little NES in a box. You know exactly what you like. It's it's rigidly constrained when you design that thing as to what you can do with the system. This is it's a basic video game and it's not tied to, you know, it has the appeal of you can put more controllers than just two on it if you want. So you can play games with more than just two people by just 
hooking into it with your phone. There's no extra cost. And it is relatively they, cheap. They push right. the right buttons on the nostalgia stuff with the controller. I really like the logo, too. It, it's it's very 70s. I like the uh, name. I like the Amico. Well, Amico and, like, the triangular A, like, they, they know what they're getting their inspiration from but i think it is really only an inspiration it's not driving the design of this console and they're, they're gonna have games from it but they're not they're gonna be novel because they're not games that people have played yeah i see what you're saying i i'll be curious because i think no one i don't think the kids are gonna leave the the phone games i mean Fortnite, PUBG, they're huge on the phone. Any, I think there's more recognition with the Nintendo Classic consoles than Intellivision. But I agree, there, there's more that the Intellivision offers than a Classic console. I don't know if that'll be enough to entice people. I have, At I have 150 a, bucks? Yeah. Right, uh, you could get a SNES Classic at 60 bucks, half the price. Yeah, but you can't ever get any more games for it, ever. You that can't ever put any more than two controllers on it. Right. I uh, I have a, I have a question for you guys. I yeah. thought this was interesting. So they announced this uh, very recently, um, within, within the past week. Uh, this currently has a release date of uh, October 2020. Do you think that was wow. totally out of so that's that's real that's two years away do you think there's even a chance that this doesn't make it to market yeah like yeah, do you think they're just testing out. the demographic do you think they just put it out to see how much uh reaction they get if it's that far out then probably i mean this looks like a a cheap rendering the, it's like the atari. image that we have of it well the atari one the the rendering was better quality that looked like something that was closer to production than this yeah i think atari Not was the that... same like that I, mean, I think we all agreed like when atari kind of hit the news waves that it was a scam but also like it but their i don't price think it's ever gonna make was, it to market their price point was what for that it was ridiculous uh it's like 300 bucks right, right. they also it's, promised like 100 things but it has real wood <laughs> but that's not the point of fucking wood grain the point of wood grain <laughs> is that it's fake <laughs> it's not supposed to be real they probably but, are yeah. testing the waters, like you're saying, though. Yeah. It is interesting that they even like. It seems strange. I like no mo like the the PS5 and the Xbox too. Uh, they would never be like, oh, we're coming out in 2020, and here's the price two years away. You know, yeah, it right. seems like that's almost part of the testing the waters is being like, it's 150 bucks. What do you guys think? Um, and it, yeah. It's almost like they're trying to get co cohesive friendship well, unit to make a video about it. <laughs> they can decide if they want to bring it to market. Yeah. Put it this way. If they were coming out with it tomorrow, I, I would say that they have a stronger chance than the if the Atari thing came out tomorrow. I would actually tend to agree with you there. If, if it was coming out tomorrow, I would say that in the long run, it would do better than either or of the the classic the nintendo classic consoles not both combined but either or uh -huh. so you're talking a couple million units yeah i think it would have i think it would be reasonably popular if it came out tomorrow at that price point all right fair enough any any other uh, closing thoughts not all really right. nope all right brian well, if, if, if you guys think you'd be reasonably popular if, if you came on sale tomorrow at a price point of $150, make sure to let us know down in the word box there. And uh, like Chris said at the beginning of the video, uh, if you sub to this channel, you'll be automatically entered into a dank chance to win some dank Steam codes. So go ahead and click that sub button and the little ringy dingy in the top right hand corner of your screen there while you're at it so you get continuously updated with all the continuously cohesive shit we're doing here on the continuously cohesive cohesive friendship unit channel and uh smoke them if you got them guys that's all for me tonight chris thank you brian we will catch you guys next time <laughs>